Man, that's good. It's good to be here. If you have your Bibles, I'd like you to open the Word of God this morning to the book of Luke, chapter number 7. If you'd like to stand as we open God's infallible Word. The book of Luke, chapter number 7. And begin reading with verse number 36. Luke, the beloved physician. Luke, chapter number 7. And verse number 36, the infallible text says, And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. He went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth her, toucheth him, for she is a sinner. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one owed five hundred pence and the other fifty. And when he had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Simon answered and said, I suppose he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house, thou gavest me no water for my feet. But she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. Amen. And he saith unto her, Thy sins are forgiven. Right. Father, in thy name, bless your word. In Jesus' name we pray, man. You can be seated. The Bible is a book that has many stories in it about things that have happened. It's a history book. You can read the Bible and envision creation morn when all of a sudden there was nothing but God and then all of a sudden all the creation came into being. Let there be, he said, and so it was. That's what you call a dramatic, profound thing to see God Almighty create. Then the story of the flood and how that ark traversed from one old, one old world into the new one. To see the stories of the Bible, how the Red Sea parted and the children of Israel crossed over on dry ground. How the mountain was on fire and God gave them the Ten Commandments. All these stories in the Bible, I believe, I believe the Word of God from cover to cover. I believe the Lord Jesus walked on water. I certainly do. I believe he stood at the tomb of Lazarus, and I believe he raised the dead. I believe he said, Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible said, he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot in grave clothes, and here came Lazarus out from the dead. I believe he turned the water into wine. I believe he fed 5,000. I believe he did all these things. I believe he's the great miracle worker. He's the man of Galilee. But my friends, some stories in the Bible are very personal. They speak to the heart in a way nothing else can. They get right down there with you where you live. And this is one of them. This is a story about a woman who came into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. She came where, she, where he was because she heard he was there. And it's quite a remarkable contrast between personalities. We have Simon on one hand and we have the woman on the other. My friend, this morning as we open the pages of this word, I hope God opens your heart to begin to understand what's going on before your very eyes. This is not what you can learn in a classroom. You can't teach it rote. You can't break it down, put it under a microscope. But it has a profound message in it. It's the kind of message that if you really get what's going on here, you can walk out that back door this morning different than you were when you came in. 
I want you to notice that first of all that we've got two sinners. There is no doubt whatsoever that they were both sinners. Simon was a Pharisee. He was well known in his community, well respected, a man of letters. He was he had he had earned his way to a place of respect among the people, well known, even so much to so that his name is mentioned here in the book of Luke, chapter number seven. But we also have a woman that comes into this building and she has no name. If you'll notice, she's never one time mentioned throughout the scripture as to who she was. That's by design. The Almighty knew her name. He could have easily included it here and told you who this was. But that's not what this story is about. It's not about personalities in person. It's about forgiveness. It's about coming into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ for two reasons. One is he brought him in that he might toy with him and play with him and pick his mind and find out who is this man. The other came from a heart leading her to the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. She wasn't concerning herself with intellectual things. She came because she had a great need and he was the only one on the face of the earth that could meet that need. I'm sure as the woman that had suffered many things of many physicians, she might have tried everything that Israel had to offer and every last one of them failed her. But here she heard of Jesus and here she came. There's something about the Lord Jesus Christ that draws sinners. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all man unto me. There's something about him that once an individual begins to really understand who the Lord Jesus Christ is, it will draw them to him. The fact that we are sinners, every last one of us of Adam's race, we are sinners. We are all guilty before God. Every last one of us must give an account to God for the fact that we have sinned but thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift he has made a remedy for sin he has made a way for the sinner and here on this occasion only happened one time through all the Bible all the history recorded in scripture here is one lone woman who comes walking into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and if you notice he doesn't rebuke her he doesn't turn her away he doesn't turn his back to her he doesn't cast her off he doesn't make an example of her he simply stands where he is and she comes to him and when she comes to him she comes to him in a, man, in a manner and an attitude that my friend if you've ever been in, in your life you'll never forget it for the rest of the days of your life who is this one here in the midst between two sinners notice that he has on one hand a sinner like this town is full of sinners like this nation is full of sinners and like this world is full of sinners they got a head knowledge of their religion they're high and mighty in their religion they know all about the accoutrements of religion they are robed in the robes of religion but it hadn't done them a bit of good whatsoever the Bible doesn't even tell you what this woman has on it tells you nothing about her appearance and her garb it says nothing about what she has if she has any money at all that's not the issue she comes in there with tears there's something about these tears that speaks to the heart of a man and a woman it's tears Tears. It's not the kind of tears that are alligator tears is referred to or some other thing, some stupid frivolity. But these are the tears of a broken heart. These are the tears of somebody that came to the end of her way. These are the tears of a soul that was raised up out of the ditch. These are the tears of somebody that's met God. These are the tears that want to be poured out into the presence of the Holy Son of the living God. And tears have value. Make no mistake about it. They preach a lesson and speak a message that words cannot speak. If a tear is the right tear, originates from the heart of an individual, you don't need to say anything. You don't need to say a word. Sometimes words are too much. If you notice here, Simon does a lot of talking. He's talking, he's talking, and he's talking while she's crying. Oh, what a difference there is. The church today is full of people that talk, 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 talk but they're very little tears. If you notice the eyes of those about you, even your own eyes, as a matter of fact, when's the last time you cried tears? I'm talking about the kind of tears that's coming forth from this woman's eyes. Tears that originate from the heart. They're the warmest. They're the sweetest. They're the most powerful. They're the kind of tears that touch the very heart of God. He made a man in a way that a man can speak to God. He can correspond with him. 
He can get a hold of God's heart like nothing else can. He knows your innermost being. He knows what makes you tick. He knows why you are what you are. He knows what it takes to speak to your heart. He got her heart. He never did get Simon's heart on this day. Simon was concerned with things that make no difference whatsoever. He wasn't concerned about his condition. You won't read one time where Simon ever looked at himself when he was sitting there with the Lord Jesus Christ so close to him. It's like Judas Iscariot. When Judas Iscariot found him in the garden, the Bible said he walked up to the Son of God and laid a big kiss on him, identifying him as the Lord Jesus Christ. My friend, he kissed the gate of heaven. As the old time preachers used to say, he kissed the very gate of heaven and went to hell. Here sits Simon in the presence presence of the son of man in the presence of one that's able to change him beyond his wildest dreams and yet he's totally oblivious to that fact how many people are sitting in our churches like that they're completely oblivious to the fact they got a head full of knowledge they were raised up in the Baptist church they're fundamentalists to the core they can quote scripture but nothing has ever really touched their heart he said something in here that has power to it he gave him a little analogy about two creditors and said one owed a little and one owed a lot and the one they owed it to forgave them both he said Simon who do you suppose would be the most thankful oh that thankfulness oh he said well I guess the one that owed him the most he said Simon you've rightly judged you got that part right Simon to whom much is forgiven the same loveth much I'll tell you something folks you can get things in your head and you can get them in your heart and the buying the difference is about 18 inches one will take you to hell the other will take you to heaven it's so hard to get a man to understand it's not all these ideas and thoughts and things flying through your head that make you what you are it's what's in your heart from the abundance of the heart the man's the mouth speaketh with a heart man believeth unto salvation she had something to give him she didn't have any money with any different you want your money she didn't come in offering him lands and titles she had something to give him that Simon didn't have she had something to give back to him him. my friend oh what a wonderful thing something you can give God preacher yeah you can you can give him your tears you can give him tears that rise up from a heart and her heart was thankful make no mistake about it she was thankful how do you know that preacher I know that by reading this text she was thankful now I want to tell you something this morning this is very important I hope you get what I'm saying outside New York City there lies a grave I've told you before about that grave. This is one thing that spoke to me a long time ago. At that grave, there's a tombstone, just a little headstone. There's no name on it. There's nothing on that grave to identify who's in there. You say, preacher, what a horrible thing. It's got one word on that headstone. You say, preacher, what is that word? Forgiven. Forgiven. That's all that's there. Forgiven. Oh, what a thing. Forgiven. I don't know who carried that body out there I don't know who buried them beneath the sod but I'm sure it's the request of the one that died he said there she said I don't want any name on there I don't want any dates on there I don't want to be bragged about anybody I want you to put one thing on that tombstone forgiven and so they put forgiven now that doesn't mean anything to a lot of people it doesn't mean anything to the high and mighty it doesn't mean anything to Simon because he doesn't know what it means you see my friend you can't tell somebody what that means you can only experience it the words you can look up in a dictionary sure you can and you can break this etymology down and trace it to its roots and you can do all of that but you still don't know what it means you got to experience it it's something that you got to feel you see my friend you can get words intellectual into your mind but my friend this thing I'm talking about this morning is something you feel and make no mistake about it you're going to feel it once your sins are forgiven you're going to feel it you're going to know it it will be such a profound thing 
to your soul. It's going to change your life. It's going to be somewhere you shout and say, glory to God, I didn't know such a thing existed. I've been forgiven. All of those old dirty low down things I ever did, they're all gone. The slate has been wiped clean. I'm no longer what I used to be. That's God's mark upon your soul. That's him letting you know you're saved. It's that thing about forgiveness. You can, you can, listen, you can make yourself think that you're a new person. You can subscribe to a new doctrine. You can meet some kind of catechism, but you can't feel that forgiveness till it really happens. And once it does, hallelujah, you got a message from that day on. You can look at a man and say, I don't care what you've done. I don't care where you came from. I don't care how low down you are. You can be forgiven. What is forgiveness, preacher? Forgiveness is condemnation being lifted. Once he forgives, the condemnation is gone. And my friend, when the condemnation is gone, the guilt has been taken away. You're no longer accountable. You no longer have to answer for what you did. Ain't that good? How many of you in here this morning said, boy, that's a good deal. For God to forgive me means I don't have to account. I don't have to answer for what I did before. That's exactly right. He wipes the slate clean. But so something else attached to forgiveness and there's a burden with sin some of you came to this house this morning burdened down you're carrying a load no man should have to carry when Cain was cast out of that garden he said my punishment is too great for me to bear I can't live the rest of my life under this kind of punishment he should have thought about that when he killed his brother he should have thought about that before he did what he did but the bottom line is he's already done it it's already happened the curse is fallen the guilt is there the soul is condemned and my friend that's where the devil would lead you and leave you he'll hold you there if he can he'll keep you in condemnation if he can then he'll create a religion for you to work yourself out of it make yourself feel better about it explain it away in a million different ways but once forgiven once forgiven once forgiven what is it preacher it's a lifting of a burden it's a soul set free it's the rising above the earth it's a lightness in your walk it's a joy in your soul it's a song glory to God in the heart when a man's forgiven you don't have to tell him what it means he tells you what's happened to him he'll tell you what he feels He'll tell you where his soul stands. I am forgiven. I once was a dog. I once was unclean. I once was filthy. I once was headed for hell. But God bless your soul. I'm saved. I'm forgiven. My sins are gone. And so she had tears. Oh, thank God for tears. She came into that room and she brought something nobody else could bring. Her tears. They weren't somebody else's tears. It wasn't somebody else's testimony that she lived on. She was forgiven. And my friend, when forgiveness came, the tears flowed. I've yet to see it fail. I've seen grown men, hardened men, fighting men. When they bow down on their knees, and get right with God, the tears flow. Oh, thank God. The tears, the fountain of the soul, whatever you want to call it, they begin to flow out. If you'll look in that book of Revelation, you'll find Almighty God has a place in heaven that he contains the prayers of the saints. I believe they're mixed with tears. I believe they're anointed with tears. I believe they're salvaged with tears. I believe the prayers of the saints of God rise up to heaven on the wings of tears. Tears are a wonderful thing. Christian friend, how long have you been dry? When was the last time a tear formed under your eyeball? When was your heart moved where something greater than you began to stir your soul? We live in a lost generation, a dying country. They're going to hell all around us. Where's your tears? Where's your tears for your family members? Where's your tears for yourself? Where's your tears for your countrymen? Where are your tears today? Has your fountain dried up? Say, yeah, preacher. I still have all of my mind and all that I believe, but my tears are gone. Lord, restore to me 
grasp the joy of that salvation, David cried. And with that joy comes tears. Thank God for tears. Oh, listen. If you could have been standing in that room that day and watched that woman take those tears and just let them fall down on his feet. I mean, they fell as a torrent. They came as a flood. The tears were rising up from her heart and falling down on his feet. Every time one of those warm tears touched the foot of the Son of God, his heart moved. Yeah! That's what he came here for. He came to reach fallen sinners. He came to save that which was lost. That's why he came. He didn't come to make new worlds. All he had to do was speak that. That would happen. No, he had to shed his blood. Had to go to a cross. Had to die. And here was one long before he went to the tree. With those hot tears falling down on his feet. He could feel it in his soul. Is it worth it? The devil said to him, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Is it worth it? Oh, yeah, it's worth it. Charles Lawson, that old low-down stinking junkyard dog, he's going to hell, and I'm going to stop him. I'm going to save him, and I'm going to wash his sins away. Hey, he did. He did. I felt it. I felt it. I bowed my head on that sofa that day in that living room. And I said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I'd prayed prayers before. I'd been in church before. I'd been in Sunday school before. I had. I'd been in religious services. All kinds of them. I'd been in Catholic masses and I'd been everywhere. But that day when I bowed my head, I bowed my head on that sofa. And I said, God, forgive me. Save my soul. I raised my head back up and it wasn't the same world that I lorded in. I raised my head back up and something had lifted off of my soul. I'd been forgiven and I knew it. I had a long track record. And my friend, make no mistake about it, sorry and low down. Whoa! But he changed me that day. Amen. When I raised my head up, I felt a flood of the Holy Ghost move into my soul and my sins were forgiven, 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 forgiven. You'll hunt long and hard to find out who she is. Her name's not in there, Brother West. The Bible doesn't want you to know any name. It's not about a name. It's about a forgiven sinner. It's about a forgiven sinner. Now maybe you feel like you're too good to be forgiven. Maybe you don't feel like you've done anything bad enough to be forgiven for. Maybe you feel like you were raised up and kind of life you were raised up in. You really don't need the kind of forgiveness that I need. But I'm going to tell you something about the human soul. And hear me well. Whereas by one man's sin and death entered by sin. And so death passed upon all men for all have sinned you were born with the nature of Adam given the circumstances and opportunities you can commit the most heinous sin that your soul could ever imagine I understand this today it doesn't take any more grace to save a, to save somebody that's, that was raised up in a good environment than it does to save one that has been a hell raiser all their life it's the grace of God that bringeth salvation that's appeared to all men same blood same salvation same forgiveness forgives and cleanses is all. I want you to know something this morning. I cried that day. Oh, before that I wouldn't dare let anybody see me cry. Ain't no way under the earth on God's earth that somebody had seen me cry. Boy, when I raised my head back up in that living room, there was a fountain opened up in my soul. I began to cry. I wept because my heart had been broken. It was softer than it used to be. Changed. I wasn't hard like I was before. It had been changed and the tears started to flow. Oh, thank God for tears. Thank God for forgiveness. Thank God for the burden lifted. Now, friend, you can only know. Listen, listen. I don't have to tell you. If, you're, if you've been forgiven, you know it. You know it. And if you've been forgiven, you love him. And if you've been forgiven, you love him, you want to show him. Do you know what a worship service is? A worship service can be one person or a hundred million or anything in between. Do you know what it is? Let me tell you what a worship service is. And I'll shut up as simple as it could be. It's a redeemed person that's been forgiven, that's been born again, saved by the grace of God that wants to come back before their maker and thank him. 
and exalt his holy name for what he's done for them. Then by that definition, it excludes every soul on the face of this earth that's never been born again because they can't truly worship God. Amen. Forgiven. Oh, forgiven. 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 I don't have cared anymore. I'm not condemned anymore. Forgiven. Forgiven. Have you been forgiven? Do you really know you have? Do you really know you have? I have a great fear of people who have to be convinced constantly about their salvation. Somehow or another, they have to have somebody, some man's, some man's bolstering up of their faith or, or helping them in the faith to get them to, get them to have the kind, of, the kind of assurance that they need. You don't need that from man. Come from God. Forgiven. If He forgave me, He saved me. If He saved me, He changed me. Forgiven. I want to meet her. There's a few in the Bible I want to meet. I want to meet the woman who washed his feet with tears. Dried them with her hair. If you don't know Jewish tradition, you need to know this. The length of a woman's hair was an indication of her glory. The Apostle Paul said a woman's hair is given her as a covering. It's her covering. It's her glory. A woman's hair is her glory. She took her glory. She took that part that would have been that would have, would have manifest her beauty, her acceptableness, her, her place, her station. She took the very thing that God gave a woman for her covering and said, hey, me, none of me. This is what matters. Amen. Took that hair. Amen. And she washed his feet with her glory and her tears. Boy, what did he do to her, preacher? He said, woman, Thy sins be forgiven thee. Amen. Have you ever heard that in your heart? Have you really ever heard it? This country's full of preachers standing in the pulpit, been to Bible colleges that destroyed their faith in God and the Word of God. Now they're pastoring churches and they deny the blood atonement, the virgin birth, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. They deny everything. They deny it all. Yet they are good religious reverends. And they're just as lost as they can be. And the people that they're preaching to week after week after week are in the same shape they're in. Have you ever really been forgiven? I have been. Anybody else? What did it feel like? What did it feel like? Can't describe with words. What's that tell you? It tells you it's real. That's what it tells you. It's real. Nothing else could do that for you if it wasn't real. You wouldn't believe how many people right now this morning, right now, are getting drunk because they can't handle who they are. Shooting up dope, drunk, whatever. Whatever, however means they want to get drunk. You know, whether by dope or alcohol. Same end in view. I can't handle it. You wouldn't believe how many kids right now are in mental institutions. Teenagers. I read a thing about that the other day. It said that our mental institutions are filling up with teenagers. They can't handle it. They can't handle it. They can't handle it. Jesus is the answer. Father, in thy name we pray. Preach what you put on my heart. There's somebody in this house this morning, Lord, needed to hear that. And they need to respond to it. Here's a woman that washed his feet. Only one did it. Washed his feet with her tears. My, what a thing. What a thing. <laughs> Took a lot of tears to wash his feet. Took a lot of tears. Oh, boy. Is there somebody in here this morning that needs to say, Lord God, that's where I am. I need forgiveness. I've tried everything. I've tried it all. I've tried every religious route. I've been to every church in Knoxville, been through every religion Christianity has to offer. It doesn't mean no good. I still have not received any help for my soul. Reach up and take hold of Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ. The person of Christ. 
Take hold of him. Your way. Your way. In your way. Reach up and embrace him and say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sink or swim, live or die. I'm going to take hold of you. I want you. I want you in my heart. I want you in my Savior. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Jesus, come to me. Help me today. Save me today. Would you do that? Father, in thy name we pray now. The message is in your hands. I'm nothing but the messenger. I've delivered it. Now it's with thee. In thy name we pray. Amen. Stand up and sing. What have we got, brother? Page number 382 in All American. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No sweeter name to the human soul than the name of Jesus. Oh, what a name. What a name. What a name. Did you come? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We live in a unique generation. No generation in America has ever had as much as this one. And no generation has had as many diversions as this generation. Listen, folks, there's every kind of a technological toy, every kind of a gadget, and every kind of a thing you can possibly do to keep you involved and keep, you, keep your mind it away from God. But I have seen an awful lot of people that are getting tired of the fluff with all the promises it makes and they got an empty dead life. They've got a life full of stuff but they live a dead life. They're completely miserable and unhappy. Won't you come to him? Try the same one your great, 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 great grandfather tried. Try him. Amen. You'll find him to be true. You'll find him alive. You'll find him receive you. Why we sing another verse? you come oh, we got a hold of him are you praying folks have you quit your prayer life you'll notice all the spiritual things in your life drying up because your tears have dried up are you praying have you quit praying come back this morning and get your prayer life started back Won't you come? Come to the one who's able to do above and beyond all that you ask or think. Come to him. We have a brother right here that's got a physical condition and he wants to be anointed with oil this morning. According to James chapter number 5, verse 14, call for the elders of the church. If you'd like to come down here at the front with us and meet us, we want to pray for this brother. God can heal him right here outright. He can heal him right here, right now. The rest of you can be seated for a moment if you want to.
And so now, brother, my Lord, raise this brother up right now. Touch him, Father. Touch this affliction in his body. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to heal him. In thy holy name we pray. For Jesus' sake, we ask you, Lord, and amen. We've got a young man here this morning who wants to unite with the fellowship of this assembly.